Welcome to the 18th annual Pierce College Distinguished Alumni Celebration. I'm Dean. <laughs> My name is Deidre Swallow. I am the relatively new Vice President for Advancement at Pierce College District, and I'm the Executive Director of the Pierce College Foundation, and it is the foundation that is hosting this evening's special event. Um, and tonight, we have the pleasure of honoring four former Pierce College students who have achieved significant successes. We're celebrating their accomplishments and our very great fortune to have been part of these, these stories. But before we meet our alumni, I'd like to in introduce some of our other guests. So please hold your applause until we're done with everybody, and please continue eating. I like to hear that clinking. <laughs> Join me in welcoming four members of the Pierce College Trust Board of Trustees. So if you would please stand briefly while I call your name. That would be great. Our board chair and liaison to the foundation board, Angie Rorty. Angie? Up, hold the clothes. Yeah. Our board vice chair, Steve Smith. Amadeo Tiam and his wife, Susan. And our newest board member, Brett Willis, and his wife, Connie. Thank you for coming. We have a number of Pierce College Foundation board members with us tonight as well. Again, please stand while I call your name so we can acknowledge you. Our Foundation Board President, Pat Lewis. Our Foundation Treasurer, Linda Evanson, and her husband, Jerry, is with us. Leslie Watts and her husband, Don. Dave Hamria and his wife, Barb. Marty Lovedell and his wife, Liz Scott. Okay, thank you. Okay, our presenting sponsors this year are Jim and Vicki Murphy, and both of them are alumni of Pierce College. And in fact, Jim was one of our distinguished alumni in 2007. They were not able to join us tonight, so we'll have to recognize them in absentia, but we're very grateful for their support. Also in our audience tonight are current Pierce College students who come from our athletics, student newspaper, and music uh, departments. So could you please stand? The students, our current students. All of them. Okay. I have a feeling you're gonna find some inspiration in tonight's stories. Um, and we're hoping to see some of you getting this award in a few years to come. We'd like to acknowledge current and former faculty members who are here tonight and who are making a difference in our students' lives every day. So current and former faculty members, would you please stand and be acknowledged. I'm a relatively new employee at the college, and I am very fortunate to work with an outstanding team of leaders, and I'd like you to help me in recognizing the leadership team at Pierce College District. Pierce College CEO and Chancellor, Dr. Michelle Johnson, and please everyone stand. The president of Pierce College Fort Stillicum, Ms. Denise Yoakum. The president of Pierce College Puyallup, Dr. Marty Cavallusi. Vice President for Administrative Services, Mr. Troy Halliday. Vice President for Student and Learning Success at Pierce, Co at Pierce College, Pierce College, Fort Stillicum. I'm going to remember that, Pierce College. <laughs> Dr. Deb Gilcrest, Vice President for Student and Learning Success at Pierce College, Pialop, Dr. Mark Matt Campbell. Vice President for Workforce, Economic, and Professional Development, Ms. Joanne Beria. Vice President for Human Resources, Ms. Holly Gorski. And the Director for Marketing and Communications, Mr. Brian Benedetti. So I, we, we started that team with, with Dr. Johnson, and I think many of you, if not all of you, uh, know Michelle pretty well. She's worked for the college district for 36 years, and she supports Pierce College and our students in every way imaginable. So I'd like to invite her to come up and tell you a little bit more about what's going on at Pierce College. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much, Deidre. You know, we are so fortunate to have a foundation board who is committed to Pierce College and who really recognizes the importance of, of honoring our distinguished alums. So I want to thank our foundation for tonight. On behalf of our board of trustees, our college presidents, faculty, and staff, I really do want to welcome you to Pierce College. It is an evening of celebration. We have some exciting events tonight, and it's just great to see you. You know, as I look out across the room, I see many individuals who have played a role uh, in Pierce College's success. Many of you were just asked to stand. But I do want to recognize one other individual, if I may, who's with us tonight. And that's Mr. Steve Wall. Steve was the first, when we became two colleges in 1999 and recognized as a two college district, Steve became the president, the first one at Puyallup, as well as the district president, and then was changed to chancellor. And I had the opportunity to work with him. And Steve, it is great to have you here. So even though there are many of you here tonight who know things about Pierce College, I'm not sure you may all know the extent of our diversity, the students we serve, and the programs across this vast district. We are the largest institution of higher education in the South Sound, and we're proud of that. And what I would say to you is that Pierce College is a mission-driven institution. We take our mission to heart. And it goes something like this. Actually, it goes exactly like this. <laughs> it says that Pierce College is committed to providing and creating quality educational opportunities so that our diverse community of learners can thrive in the evolving world. And that's what we do each and every day. We do that work from our two campuses, the one here at Fort Stillicum, and in Puyallup, our second, as well as a large operation at Joint Base Lewis-McCord. In addition, we're located at Western State Hospital, still at McNeil Island and the sexual offender program there, Rainier School, and a variety of sites throughout the community where we serve individuals primarily learning English as their second language. So each year, around 25,000 students come to us they come to us with dreams and hopes and aspirations. Some of them come to get the first two years of a transfer degree. Olivia is sitting at the table with me today and she's getting two, her two years done while she's doing Running Start. That's a junior and senior in high school, so she's a senior graduating. Some students come to us because they want a degree in a professional technical program so that they will have the skills that they need to go to work or to get a promotion. There are other students who come to us because they are new immigrants to this country and they want to learn English, right? And when they do that, it's so that they can use all of their skills in this community. And along with those students are those who, for whatever reason, um, didn't make it the first time in high school. And they come to finish that degree or to get a GED so that they can continue to live out their hopes and dreams. And we welcome all of those, as well as the individuals who just come to us because they're lifelong learners. They want to take a class or two and learn a new skill or have new knowledge or just have personal enrichment. And so we open our doors and we welcome all of those students to Pierce College each and every year. We also know that it's important that we provide, I told you, quality educational opportunities. And so we do that through a variety of programs, whether our students are studying in science, math, or technology, in business or social science, arts and humanities, whether they want those specific programs in healthcare like nursing and dental hygiene and vet tech where we have stellar success with our students finishing their degrees and, and becoming professionals in those fields or whether they're looking to be an early childhood educator, or someone in criminal justice, or social sciences, or computer science, or engineering, they go across the gamut. So there's many, many more to list. We also know that we uh, want to provide excellence 
And so we have had some very distinguished awards at Pierce College. We had the, the number one library in the nation, the Community College Library, and we're proud of that. It's a, it's a fantastic group of faculty and staff, yes. And it's so, such a, you know, libraries at the source really of, of information literacy. It's what we work with every single day. We have award-winning military programs, music, art, theater, and we have co-curricular programs like our newspaper and student leadership and athletics. And all of these help form the whole student because we are committed to our student's success no matter what program they choose and what their goals are. So it's our job to help them reach those dreams and those hopes and their aspirations that they come to join with us. When I was um, thinking about what I was going to say tonight, I was told to uh, tell a story. But I really have to tell you that there is not a story that I could tell that is more compelling than the four you're going to hear tonight. So I'm leaving it up to our distinguished alum <laughs> to tell you some incredible stories. So you will hear about these honorees. And I think that what you'll see by the end of tonight it's why we are passionate about what we do. It's about creating those possibilities so students can realize theirs. And so with that, please join me first in just, just honoring and welcoming these four individuals. Could we do that? I wanted, I was gonna, you know, I, I, I know um, very well three of the four, which is really great. <laughs> but I, I have to say this, you know, Kate, I was a Kate Starberg groupie. You know, I was a former, former athlete and women's basketball coach here at Pierce College, and so you, you were a hero, okay? And Greg and, and Natalie and, and uh, Shalaya, who I'll get to meet, is wonderful. So let me now introduce our MCs for tonight. Both of these individuals are distinguished alum, like those that we're honoring tonight. So first, we have, we have Dan Bennett and Denise Randall, and they're going to join me here in a second. So let me tell you about Dan. He is an emeritus member of our foundation board. He's a past president. And when we were making a transition, Dan stepped in and said he would keep that presidency for a year and help us make the transition. And I'm really grateful for the work that you did there. He, and he was honored in 2000 as a distinguished alum. And he and his wife, Debbie, are owners of Martin Henry Roasters. And, and Dan is also an agent with Remax Town & Country Real Estate. Denise Randall was, was um, honored just last year, 2013, as a distinguished alumna. And she is the Director of Education Employment um, of Programs at MDC, which is making a difference in community. Um, so she, at that particular organization, is one of the leading nonprofits in Pierce County that really focus on, just as it says, making a difference in community and really serving and helping to educate individuals, helping prepare them for colleges and having the services they need, particularly focusing on low-income students and the first in their family to go to college, which is 60% of our students are the first in their family. So Denise, thank you for your work. So please join me in welcoming Dan and Denise as your MCs for tonight. Well, good evening. Thank you so much, Michelle. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's just a great honor to be part of this ceremony tonight. Um, I, I can't even remember back to 2000 when when I, was, when I was up here for that, that experience, but um, you're in for a real treat. It's, it's great to be surrounded by so many fellow alumni. And um, I'd like to recognize a few of the former distinguished alumni that are in the room today. And uh, along with Denise, of course, we have Jerry McLaughlin, the very first distinguished alumni named in 1981. We have Jonathan Harris, U.S. Air Force Reserve and found current foundation board member. We have Marguerite Shannon, 
early childhood education faculty member. And we have John Simpson, Pierce College faculty member, photojournalist, and Lakewood City Council member. Well, Dan, thank you. Well, I have to say, I, I do remember it as if it was yesterday or last year, <laughs> because it was. <laughs> it is an honor to be asked to MC tonight, and I am excited to share in the celebration and recognition of our four new distinguished alumni. Each of them are so deserving of this recognition. They are Dr. Kate Starbear, Assistant Professor in the Department of Human-Centered Design and Engineering at the University of Washington, Natalie Mayer, Asset Manager, Community Activist and Philanthropist, Dr. Shelley Seacrest, Attorney and Policy Analyst for the Alliance for a Just Society, and Greg Brazell, Dean of Social Science and Business Division at Pierce College. Our first honoree, Dr. Kate Starbird. Before she made her WNBA debut, Pierce College Running Start alum Kate Starbird made her mark at Stanford University and excelled both in basketball and academics. When her professional career ended, she decided to go back to school, ultimately earning her doctorate from the University of Colorado. Today, she serves as a professor uh, of the University of Washington Human-Centered Human Design and Engineering Department it's a mouthful, where she studies the intersection of human behavior and technology. More specifically, her area of interest revolves around the use of social media to spread information and misinformation during crisis situations. In addition to teaching and research work, she also spends a great deal of time reading admissions applications for bachelor's, master's, and PhD students. Her own experience at Pierce College has given her a unique perspective on students coming from community colleges around the state. Congratulations, Kate. Let's watch a video and get to know her just a bit better. It was my senior year at high school. I was actually a student at Lakes High School, and I used to um, walk or drive from Lakes over to the Ford Stillicum branch of Pierce, which actually isn't, isn't that far. I took math classes and computer science classes. Um, mostly because I'd run out of classes to take at the high school. It really helped me prepare for my next step, which was actually to go off to, to college at Stanford. So I, played, uh, I played basketball at Lakes and then at Stanford, and then I played 10 years of professional basketball. The opportunity to play professional was, was fantastic, and um, I, I very much enjoyed it. But by far the best part of my professional career was being able to play overseas. And I ended up playing overseas for five seasons. Three of those were in Spain, and one of them, the last year, was on an island in the Mediterranean. The year ended, and I said, I have to retire now. It's not going to get any better. I'm only getting worse, and it's time to do something else. The, the best thing about it, being overseas was um, the ability to, to meet new people and understand new cultures and interact with people. And in many ways, those experiences shaped my new interest, not just in computer science, but in um, human behavior. But as my career was ending, I realized that I did want to go back to school. Um, and at first I wanted to do anthropology, but I ended up, uh, I was invited to this meeting where I sat down next to this guy who was, um, he was the head of a program at the University of Colorado, and I told him I wanted to do anthropology. He said, but you used to do computer science. I said, yeah, I, I did computer science, but I'm really interested in human behavior now. He said, well, we have these new, this, this new program where you can study human behavior and, and computer science and sort of the intersection. I was like, what? Wait, you can do that? Um, and so he recruited me off to the University of Colorado and I did my PhD there. And now I study human behavior online and I use all my computer science skills to help me um, write the programs to help me do the research and I even develop systems that people can use um, to interact together online. The main thing uh, that I've been looking at is the use of social media including Twitter and often mainly um, focused on Twitter for various reasons during disaster events. We use like computer programs to look at the data but we also we take thousands and thousands of tweets and we read them. Um, you feel, we feel like we're contributing, we feel like we can help the world in different ways and, and it's really interesting. I, I'm ready to be in one place for a while so I'm hoping to, to be here for a long while. As long as it's still fun. That's what I said about basketball. They said, when do you think you'll retire? I said, I'll retire when it's not fun anymore. And uh, I think the same thing for this. I'd like to be doing this for as long as it's still fun and I hope that's going to be for a long time.
Please welcome Dr. Kate to starboard. All right, um, I'd just like to, to thank you all for this award. I, I, feel, um, I, I feel really excited to be here. I feel really honored. And uh, whoever did that video did a fantastic job. The interviews went, went really well, but um, I, I need a copy of that. I, don't, uh, I, I normally don't come off that well. You'll notice this in, when, it's, when it's live. Um, no, but I, I, got a, I, got, I was actually contacted about uh, the possibility of, of receiving this award last year, and they said, oh, you, we think it, you might be a, a great recipient for this uh, Pierce College Distinguished Alumni Award. And I thought, Pierce College? And I, and I said, oh, yeah, I was, th I was there for a while. And then I, I thought to myself, you know, I don't know if, I, if I, that really is me and, 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 and whatnot. And I was very busy last year, and I said, well, talk to me next year, and I'll think about it. Well, in between last year and, and this year, I, I don't always spend a lot of time doing, time doing bachelor's admissions. I do a lot of stuff. That's a very small portion of my time, but it's an important part of what our department does. Um, we uh, are at, at the University of Washington, and, and we only can accept a few students to our department, and we're under high demand, and we only can accept about 15% of the students that apply to, to be a part of our program. And, uh, and so the bachelor's admissions process is very important because we're, we're making a big difference in these students' lives. We know they really want to be a part of it. And as I was looking over these applications, I realized how many of the students applying to us were coming through uh, the, the community colleges, the junior colleges, either as running start or with AAs. And I thought to myself, this is really important. And, and I knew it was important. My father and I have had conversations about this over the years, about how important um, th these sorts of, uh, not these sorts of, community colleges and junior colleges are in the overall um, education process, especially considering the overall expense and, and everything else. And I thought to myself, wow, um, this, is, this is so important. And I need to do this, and I need to be supportive of not only Pierce College, but these other students, and, and to see, I mean, they're extremely competitive, and I need to be a, a voice for, okay, that, that application may look different, but these students are just as good, and they're coming from great places. And I, I do remember my classes here very fondly. In fact, I had a, a math class and a computer science class that were just as good as my first year classes at Stanford in those, in those, um, in those subjects. And so um, and, and I'm excited to be here, and I, and I, and I am happy to have a chance um, to talk and meet with some of you, and I'm excited to, to take this sort of understanding of what, of what, the, what Pierce College means and, and other colleges around the, the state mean in the education of our students. And I really um, thank you for the work that you've done. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> when Lakewood businesswoman and philanthropist Natalie Mayer started at Pierce, it was the beginning of a search for what she wanted out of life and who she wanted to become. She attended Pierce at several different points in her life and credits the instructors for providing the support she needed to change careers or learn new skills to be successful in life. Today, she manages the assets of her family's business, Mayor Built. Mayor Built Homes. Natalie also plays an active role in the community, devoting her time and resources to a number of organizations such as the Northwest Sinfonietta, thank you, <laughs> Pacific Lutheran University, and a member of local nonprofit organizations. Natalie, congratulations. Let's watch a video to learn more about you and the work that you've done. It was more about self-discovery for me when I first started trying to think about what I wanted to do as far as a career goes. And um, I was really a free spirit and I thought mental health was a great field. I ended up going into Pierce strictly for psychology and mental health. It was not the right choice for me. Found out that I was really very artistic and decided to become a hairdresser and go into cosmetology school. And so I completed my license here in cosmetology in Washington State and went on to London and studied under Vidal Sassoon. It, was, it never felt like it was really enough to be a cosmetologist in my family. And so my dad said to me, he said, you know, you need to figure out what you really want to do. If you're going to do hair, then do hair. And, and let's do it somewhere where you can, you know, really get the benefit of your schooling. He said, or 
learn how to take over the business and go back to school. I decided to go back to school and that's when I went back to Pierce the second time. I am a family asset manager for my family business. My dad was a land developer for 50 years. My father was really into um, making affordable homes for people. One of the first ones my father built was Stillicum Woods. And there's also all of Cherrydale. And my, I have a street named after me, Natalie Lane. If you go through Stillicum, you see all these ramblers. Some of them are two-story, but they're just basic homes. And he had, I mean, he must have built 200 of them. And that's when I realized that that's why I had to go back and, and get as much education around real estate as I could. My life is so much more than just my career. Part of the thing with our family is giving back to the community. We're Jewish and um, it's a mitzvah to do to, to help our community and I work with PLU and I am part of their educational program with the Holocaust and Genocide program. We just ended up passing our minor so we have a minor in Holocaust and Genocide. We help teachers get to PLU and students, high school and college students, so that we can help teach them how to teach about the Holocaust. The thing that I'm most proud of is that I learned what I needed to do and that I, I have given back to my community and that I'm actually making a difference in the world. And I think that starting out at Pierce was very valuable to me because it allowed me the time to figure out what it was I was gonna give back. Please welcome Dr. Shelley Seekers. My apologies. It's like that looks really different, but <laughs> Natalie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Denise Randall, for that wonderful, interesting introduction. <laughs> and thank you to Leon Castle for, for nominating me. It means the world to me that you saw that much in me. I'm honored to be here tonight with these three other incredible people, Greg Brazil, Dr. Sheely Seacrest, and Dr. Kate Starbird, as well as being in the company of the Pierce College faculty and administration. This brings such validation to my journey. To my family and friends, it's a great joy to have you here with me tonight. Attending Pierce College showed me the importance of knowing that there was always a good option for me. When I graduated from Washington High School, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. I did know that I wasn't ready to commit to a four-year university. I was more interested in being a free spirit and wanted to feel my independence rather than the pressure of committing to a particular career. On the other hand, I knew I wanted that experience of a college education and what it offered. I knew it was important to my self-esteem to continue to grow and develop as a human being. Pierce was a great option for me. It allowed me to have a college experience without feeling overwhelmed. Pierce College showed me that I could be successful in school. It was instrumental in my enrolling in cosmetology school and becoming a licensed cosmetologist in the state of Washington. It enabled me to have the courage to apply and be accepted to Vidal Sassoon School of Beauty in London. Beginning my college years at Pierce, gave me the confidence to follow through with my desire to travel throughout Europe on my own in my early 20s. I returned to Pierce College to become a, I returned to Pierce College a second time so that I could finish my real estate coursework to become a licensed realtor, which my father convinced me to do <laughs> and later led me to being part of my family business. My dad, Kurt Mayer, I owe this to you, was a residential land developer, as I said in the video, and a home builder. I was mistaken, he built over 5,000 homes, not 200. <laughs> My mother corrected me today, <laughs> which is good. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> this was a great opportunity for me to contribute to our family business and not feel like I was going in a different direction. I would like to share a few of my highlights from Pierce College that I remember fondly to this day. One of my best memories was my interaction with my instructors. I always felt like they cared about whether I was getting it or not. They were thoughtful, compassionate, understanding, and always willing to help me. I was made to feel like I always had something to add to the class. I felt safe, I wasn't intimidated, 
and if I was struggling to understand a concept, I didn't feel like I was being judged. Another highlight was the internship that I was involved with at Western State Hospital. This opened my eyes to a part of the world that I was unaware of and helped me to understand the challenges of both the mental health professionals, the mental health system, and the mental health patients. Because of my internship at Pierce, I was hired as an assistant on the geriatric ward at Western State Hospital. That experience was life-changing, and it helped me to understand how special and unique the professionals who care for the mentally ill really are. These experiences helped me to understand that even though that was the career I thought I wanted, it was not the place for me to do my best work. Today I am more fulfilled than ever. I have a full life with my teenage son, Elliot, who I am devoted to helping explore <laughs> this world and his own exciting place in it. I honor my father as a Holocaust survivor through my involvement in PLU's Holocaust and Genocide Program and the Powell Heller Holocaust Conference. Several years ago, I was part of a small group that raised $2 million in the community to fund an endowed chair in Holocaust Studies at Pacific Lutheran, which is named after my father. I became so interested in the subject that I recently went back to school and took a 300-level class in Holocaust history at PLU and got an A. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I committed to playing, I am committed to playing an active role in educating our youth about world genocide and in particular the Holocaust. In addition, I serve on the board of the Northwest Sinfonietta and help support the arts. Over the past 20 years, I have been on the board at Plaza Hall, which is a drug and alcohol treatment center for unwed mothers and their drug addicted babies where they come to get clean and sober. I've also served on the Martin Luther King Housing Development Association where we help place homeless families. One of my passions has been getting involved with Kindred Souls Foundation, which is a non-euthanizing shelter for animals, dogs and cats, right here in Stillicum. I knew early on that I wanted more out of my life than a career. Being Jewish, it is a mitzvah, a good deed, to give back to your community in which you live. This is one of the beautiful parts of my faith and one that I take seriously. I am proud that I'm able to give back to my community and to make a difference in this world. I have found that giving back and supporting important causes in my community has given me the most fulfillment other than my son. To all the students in this audience, <laughs> your hard work and dedication, I honor it. Your investment in your future is not only for you and your family now, but for generations to come. Thank you, Pierce College. I love you. <laughs> Natalie. Our next recipient, Dr. Shalay Sechrist. Since she was a child, Dr. Sechrist knew she wanted to be a civil rights lawyer. She never lost sight of her dreams, but had little knowledge of what it would take to make this goal, her goal, a reality. As a first generation college student, it wasn't until she enrolled at Pierce College that she was able to connect with instructors who helped set her on a course that would determine the direction of her life. At the age of 31, Dr. Sechrist was named president of the Seattle King County branch of the NAACP and received the organization's National President's Award in recognition of her efforts. Today, she serves as a policy analyst for the Alliance for a Just Society, tackling issues ranging from police misconduct to the fight for a higher minimum wage. Congratulations, Shelby. I knew I wanted to be a civil rights attorney when I was nine years old. It was Pierce College who was able to map out, if you want to become an attorney, you'll need these types of classes. You'll need to major in these types of subjects. You know, it was really instrumental for our, a young girl at that time, I was 19 years old, um, with nothing more than a dream. They were able to say, okay, if you want that to become a reality, here's what you need to do. I always knew that if you want to change something, if you're not happy with the way things are, that you've got to be the source of the solution. And Pierce College allowed me to not only just form my leadership, 
but it allowed me to find others who thought the same way. I realized that I wasn't the only one in the world who thought injustice was wrong. And so it really, really equipped me to finding that creative partnerships with other people so that together we could knock out some of the things that we wanted to change in the world. Went to law school and when I graduated, I worked for a federal clerk, um, Judge Burgess. Um, down in Tacoma, Washington, and clerked for him, where I could see the way that the law worked from behind the bench. Um, was able to identify some of the changes that I wanted, which is really uh, sentencing reform laws. So a lot of the work that I've done after that have been, has been in that area. Here at the Alliance for a Just Society, I calculate how much each state is spending on locking prisoners up and whether it's effective. With just a law degree, that's not enough to um, really create the changes that you need. You need someone that's committed to giving voice to those who normally um, go unheard. Someone that's not afraid to shake things up, make us think differently, um, to advocate for those who are uh, forgotten and sometimes left behind. So the law is just one of the many things um, that I saw as an aid to be able to do it. Understanding what the rules were, the laws were, and being able to change them to meet the needs of the people. That's where the good stuff is. Please welcome Dr. Shalay Sechrist. Good evening, Pierce College family. <laughs> My name is Dr. Shalee Seacrest. It is an honor to be awarded this. And anytime you receive an award, you actually have to understand that it's more than just one person who brings me here. So with me is my family. I'd like to introduce you to Makai Griffin, my son. <laughs> Akila Griffin, my daughter. And United States Airman Eric Griffin, who is also going to be a student this fall here at Pierce College. So, <laughs> mommy will see you in everything you do. If he is late in class, please, family, let me know. <laughs> it's an honor to be able to be recognized for the hard work. Being a civil rights leader, it never goes. Um, Un, unrewarded. It's here at Pierce College that I actually learned how to find my voice. 20 years ago, Pierce College, we were at the forefront when women were breaking the glass ceiling, showing that we can do our jobs. It was here at Pierce College back then when we were contemplating with the idea of the value of diversity. Agnes Baron Stewart, I wish she was here, she did a tremendous job of leading the nation and showing the importance of making certain that we receive a quality education. Because of that basic concept that we can receive an affordable education, the idea that a college student shouldn't have to graduate with a load of student debt, that was right here in this room. And it was because of the foundation and the leadership that you all had. I was a student here. I, re I went to this dinner and I recall sitting back saying, one day that's gonna be me. Oh. It's the power in this room. It's the faculty who believe in education. It's those who are willing to talk about the tough battles and then to encourage that. Those young girls who started here when she was just 19 grows up to want to lead the nation and become a Washington State Senator. Okay. So please, vote Seacrest. But stay true to the mission of Pierce College. Understand the reason of why we're here tonight. Understand the value of the foundation and the board of what you all contribute to this campus. You guys are making a difference. You've made a difference in my life. And I thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. As 
Pierce College's Dean of Social Sciences and Business, Greg Brazil, couldn't be. <laughs> Ignore him. Okay. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> Greg Brazil, couldn't be more proud to work for the school that had such an impact on his life. His time at Pierce College prepared him for a successful career working with students of all ages, from toddlers to the elderly. He worked in the K-12 system for many years before taking a position at, at Pierce College as an adjunct faculty member in early childhood education. He joined with other early childhood education leaders to advance the cause of child care for the children of Pierce College students. According to Sherry Tinker, the former executive director of the Pierce College Foundation, Brazil's efforts and advocacy were integral to the success of the child care campaign. Congratulations, Greg. Let's take a moment and watch his video. That experience when I came here uh, it changed my life. It, it set a foundation for me that um, I always go back to. Um, I came here um, kind of like maybe a lot of the students today. You know, they're, they're just kind of lost, a little confused. Uh, and the early childhood education program just called me for some reason. I think it was just innate within me. I've, I just, I've always felt, um, for whatever reasons, I've always just felt I, 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 I need to be working with children and families. I worked in Head Start. Um, I worked in the K-12 system. I taught kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. I um, even taught high school for a couple of years. I uh, worked here as an adjunct faculty in early childhood education. And then an opening came here for a full-time faculty position. And I thought, no, man, I can't do that because I'm just, you know, my work with young children is just so important to me. And then, again, somebody from the program, Marguerite Shannon, she said, now, Greg, I want you to think about something. You're working with 20 children in a classroom per year. Now think about something. You're going to have 20 teachers per class. That's 60 potential teachers you're going to be working with every quarter. Think about the impact that they're going to have on those young children. And so she just gave it a whole new perspective for me. That's why I decided to come here to teach you know, at the community college. This college has allowed me to do is, you know, they've allowed Greg to be Greg. It's like Rocky Balboa, you dad, we need to <laughs> Even in, you know, this, this position that I'm in now, I'm still a goofball, <laughs> you know, I still like to laugh. However, I can carry on the tough conversations and I can, and I can work with, with different people on different levels. I think one of the reasons um, I've never left Pierce College and I hope never to leave Pierce College, Marguerite Shannon knows this story. And I freely admit I'm a homer for Pierce College. I, I, I believe in it, I always will believe in it. You're gonna have to wheel me out of here in a wheelbarrow, there's no doubt. Uh, <laughs> and then always at my core, I'll always advocate for the young children. I'm just, I will always be their champion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know now that I need to lay off the caffeine, man. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> this is extremely humbling and, uh, and what a great night. Thanks a lot for, for being here. This is, this is overwhelming. Um, but this, is, this represents Pierce College to me. Uh, we support each other through thick and thin and in the joyous times like tonight, so thanks a lot. Um, Michelle mentioned our mission statement earlier tonight. So I'm not like Michelle, I, don't, I can't just spit it out, I have it on paper though. Um, and it says, Pierce College creates quality educational opportunities for a diverse community of learners to thrive in an evolving world. Now somebody hold Michelle, she's either gonna faint or come up here to rip my head off, but I'm gonna change our mission statement just for three minutes, okay? Okay, all right, here we go. Pierce College <laughs> offers transformative life experiences for a diverse community of humans to thrive in an evolving world. How you like that, Michelle? Is it good? <laughs> and I just wanted to reframe that tonight because I, I, I just want to use that lens to, to reflect my experience here at Pierce College. Um, because when, when I came here, um, and, and my experiences here, it goes far beyond educational opportunities. This place has truly, truly transformed my life in every way, shape, and form. And uh, I remember the dude who doesn't know me, he was actually my first teacher here. <laughs> yeah, Marty. And um, so why I came back after your class, I'm still not sure, but anyway, no. 
I think it was because of, no, one of the first classes I had to was with Grace Koopmans, and she, she was the founder of the Early Childhood Program. And I remember one of the first things that she said that made me go, wow, she said, no, you got to remember something. Children just don't come to school. They don't just send their heads to school. The whole body comes to school. <laughs> and I was like, well, what does that mean? And she was like, well, that means we just don't teach to the brain. We teach to the whole child, physically, intellectually, emotionally, and socially. The whole child, the whole human being comes to school. And truly, that's when everything switched for me. And even with that whole philosophy now, that whole, that whole human, that's how I work now. And that's how I work with adults now. And that's how I work with, with my colleagues now. Um, and so AKA, PIES, physical, intellectual, emotional, and social. That's how we interact with our students. That's how we interact with each other. We look at each other as whole human beings, not just heads being sent to school. That's what I'm proud about. Um, so, and how that relates to my work here, some people have often asked me, what's the difference between working with a four-year-old and teaching a college student? And my answer is, body size. <laughs> that's it, okay? If, and that's not a knock, <laughs> because it's just a human is a human is a human. When those humans come into our classrooms, that's, we're working with a total package. And we believe that here, and it's kind of cool. Um, and I could go on and on about how early childhood has impacted me, but I, I just, you know, things like, you know, physically, how do you take care of a, a person here physically? I remember Karen Colloran, this is one of the first classes with you. I worked at 7-Eleven from 11 to 7 at night, and then I'd come here and go to, go to class, and I remember, <laughs> I don't know if you remember this or not, but I do. Karen was giving me this deep lecture just, and I was just like enthralled, and she was just, I'm going to teach this man something. And I fell asleep right on her, <laughs> and I started drooling, and lit, this is true, on the table. Do you remember this? And she went, oh, Greg, come, come with me. And she literally, she got me a beanbag chair. She said, you just sleep and drool here for a while, and when you're ready to come back to class, you come back to class. So anyway, she took care of me physically. That's how this place works. I mean, we take care of the whole human. Um, <laughs> And it goes on and on and on. Early childhood people, you guys just, you're amazing. And, and thanks for that. Um, the, the last couple of years, I've had the true honor to be the division chair and dean of, of a division here that um, I tell you, you're going to be forever part of my core. Um, you taught me how to serve effectively, and you taught me really what servant leadership means. Um, you know, we can talk, and we can debate. And we can, we can you know, rough and tumble, and we can laugh, and we can cry, and then we can go out and eat pizza. I mean, it truly, it's just, it has been magical, magical the last few years. And the reason we do that, we understand the human spirit. We understand the human spirit. So, and Tom, I got to tell you, one of the other reasons I stuck around here, you were the only other dude with a mullet, my friend. <laughs> The mullet will come back someday, and you and I, brother, mullet brother. So anyway. <laughs> and then, and I'll make this really quick. You guys are going to shut up, Greg. But Dean Team, you guys rock my world, man. The last few years, I mean, just we can sit in there, and, and the diverse people in there, we can sit there and talk about imp just huge, important things, and we can go back and forth. And after we're done with these huge decisions and huge everything else, we can walk out of there talking about the walking dead, Lori Griffin. <laughs> you know and then, and, and, if I, and if I can sit in a room with a Florida gator for two hours in a meeting, I've learned emotional intelligence, my friend. <laughs> so there you go. And just finally, the E team. Holy cow. Um, I, I, all I can say is that you see things in me that I could never have seen in myself, for myself. You are there to guide and mentor, and you freely gave everything to, to just to help me grow. So it, it started from day one with Marty Lobdell to currently. I mean, so Deb, you probably, I mean, you get more emails from me than, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, and you're always there, so thanks for that. And Michelle. And Marty, I got to tell you, the one thing that we have to work on, though, is you know you can you can graciously lose. Okay, that's the one thing I'll I'll mentor you with. So, um, this, my friend, is a paper football. And so Marty, where are, oh there's Marty. So Marty and Michelle, I'm going to give you my personal trainer this summer, and that's how you win in paper football, my friend. So you'll learn how to do that. So.
I just want to end tonight with a, a quote. I, and I just want to say that the thing about Pierce College that I, that I love is that we are all educators. We're all teachers here. We are all, and no matter who you are at this college, you're a teacher. So with that said, I just want to give uh, something from George Steiner, The Calling of the Teacher. There's no craft more privileged to awaken in another human being powers and dreams beyond one's own, to induce in others a love for that which one loves, and to make one's inward present their future, that is a threefold adventure like no other. And that is what Pierce College does well. We give that human adventure. So I'm looking forward to the next adventures with you all. Thanks, Raiders. You guys rock. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Greg, for that energetic presentation. <laughs> I'll bet your class is fun. I, I, just a guess, but I think it is. I'd like to personally thank all of the distinguished alumni that we've honored tonight and those previously honored distinguished alumni who are here to welcome the new class. Thanks for continuing to keep the spirit of Pierce College in all that you do. None of our fantastic honorees tonight would have made it here without the support from people like you and the generous contributions that help ensure Pierce College education is accessible for all students willing to work hard. Let me be the first to make a gift this evening. And let me be the second. Thank you. There's a check in here. There's a check in here. <laughs> Please consider making a donation today on behalf of our future distinguished alumni. There are, you'll find envelopes on the table, and you can leave a gift in that, leave it on the table, or you can seek out one of the college presidents and, and give it to them. And another thank you to the board members and the foundation and uh, the former distinguished alumni for sponsoring tonight's celebration. Really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> we really appreciate the ongoing efforts to, to give back. And, and thank you to everyone here tonight for, for being here to celebrate these, these accomplishments, these individual stories uh, for our Pierce College alumni. Uh, feel free to stay and visit and enjoy each other's company. And I'd like to invite the honorees to join us to the left so we can present the awards and get a few photos. But thank you for being here tonight. Enjoy your evening.